We're live now. <laughs> Finally. Okay, welcome to Two Bad Nerds with <laughs> Benjamin and Danny. Today we're going to cover a variety of topics. And, uh, yeah, I'll let Danny start. Oh, my God. <laughs> Someone made a song out of that? I fucking love this. If you did not remember, in that podcast, they used that little sound clip how many fucking times in that podcast? <laughs> you have to I hear it again. Now. Yeah, I think I remember now. So when they did that, and I was I was laughing. It was toward the beginning before we got roasted. And okay. Were, I was hearing this. Ain't nobody got time for that. And they said something about it, and they kept on playing it like for anything. Like, ain't nobody got time. I was laughing my fucking ass off at that part. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is this? So, I, of course, I had to do some research, and I did, and I found that it was talking about this sweet brown. And she, you know, just like that other guy who they just made this – um auto-tune remix out of his, right. you know, talking. Right, right. <laughs> his incident. So I just thought this was a virus. I thought this was, this was so wow. hilarious that I made myself a ringtone of this. There was a website that you could <laughs> get the audio from, from YouTube videos, and you can just save them as MP3s or whatever. So I made right. it as an MP3. I put it on zedge.net, and I made it into a 30-second clip, and now it's my ringtone. <laughs> wow. Wow. All it says is from, from the part that she says, I got bronchitis. <laughs> Nobody got time for that. And then it goes into the song, I fucking love this shit. Can you, can you, is that how you get bronchitis? Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't think so, right? No, she was talking about there was a fire and that she has bronchitis and she doesn't have time for fires because she has bronchitis. Does it make any sense? Not oh, really. I, I, thought, I thought she was trying to say that she got bronchitis from the smoke. I don't, you know what? Maybe you're right. I don't know. All I, don't know. all I got from it is that she has bron. No, yeah, I got that she has bronchitis. Okay. She didn't have time to have smoke mixed with that. Whatever. And why, why does she keep calling the person who's interviewing her Jesus? I mean, <laughs> no, she was, she was saying like she was talking to herself. No, like, no, I, I know, I know. I was being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> She's. Oh my God, it's funny. I never, I never understand what people, people who talk like that. Like every, oh. every sentence is like Jesus at the end of it. Like, oh, he's not, he's not there. Like, <laughs> but anyway, we're not getting into that. Oh man, so I had to share that. That's the, actually the only video I had to share. All right. I thought it was hilarious because, yeah. Well, you can thank once again thank Knights of the Clown Table for that little thing because now I'm obsessed with it. Every time somebody calls me, I'm just dancing. <laughs> Wow. Because ain't nobody got time for that. That's hilarious. I don't give a shit. Uh, anyway, moving on. So now we did the YouTube video. So you said you got some other stuff to talk about. So Yeah. Yeah, I want to start talk about a couple things. Um, I know you haven't seen Dark Knight Rises yet, so we're not going to talk about that at all. That's next um, video. Yeah, we'll do that next video. Uh, uh, we'll do the review. I'm seeing what? it tomorrow, by the way, at 10 a.m. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay. One thing I just wanted to talk about, though, was... Um, the way people react, not just The Dark Knight Rises, but the way people react to reviews of movies online, okay. um, I don't understand it. Like, a review online, when someone reviews something, it's, it's their opinion. You know, you and me may go see a movie, and you might have a totally different opinion than me. I might have a positive opinion, you might have a negative opinion, and that's, that is what it is. People who review movies for a living, you know, are... They go to the movie and they give their honest opinion, you know, and they post it on a website or whatever, a blog or whatever. Well, some people had, uh, I think it was CNN, I want to say it was CNN, that reviewed, you know, Dark Knight Rises, and they had a negative review of it. They, they didn't think very highly of it, so they posted their review, which, again, it's their opinion. I, I disagree with their review, but it's their opinion. But people were, like, literally on there talking about how they're, going to go after them, like, you know, and physically do things to them because of their negative opinion. Like, I, that, I, don't, that, I don't get that. That, like, blows my mind. Like, why would, you, why would you even think to do something like that because of someone's opinion? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you feel that passionately about anything, anybody saying something negative on that subject is going to just spark some, I don't know, animosity. Um, yeah. It's, I don't personally understand it, would I have been one of them to maybe write a comment in the review section and say that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about? Probably. Right, but it wouldn't, have, right. it wouldn't have went anything further than that. I mean, it's, right. it is what it is. You, you're not going to change the opinion of someone if they, 
feel this passionately and wrote this long, probably I'm guessing a long article, right? Exactly. Why they feel this way? You know, as long as they had valid points as to why they feel this wasn't as good as maybe you thought it was, then right. You know, that's it. What are you going to do? Just take right. the grain of salt. And why we're worrying so much about what reviewers say about movies, especially right. before you've seen it? Okay. Yeah. You really, honestly, I don't think you should see any reviews before you see a movie because yeah. you're just setting yourself up for a couple of different outcomes. You know, um, if you see a movie, uh, a review that's really positive, and maybe you don't think it's that positive, then you're just mm -hmm. like, oh, you know what I mean? You feel right. a certain type of way. And the same thing goes for it being opposite. You see a negative review, and you thought it was really good, then you're one of those few that might have some, you know, this big attitude about that reviewer and right. you're uh, like curse the day they were born or something <laughs> it doesn't it just doesn't make too much sense I mean we're going to be reviewing it kind of but right it's not like we're going to say oh you can't agree you can't not agree with what we're saying <laughs> right we're not the, the the one only review <laughs> yeah we're just saying it from two points of view from someone who at least knows the history in your case of the, the comics, maybe not a full history, but a lot greater history than I know, and some of myself who doesn't really do comics, but does like, you know, stuff like superheroes and nerdy stuff like that. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. I mean, it's just, if you've got to respect people's opinion, and it just seems people on the internet these days just don't have, just can't do that for some reason. You know, they can't accept that we all might have a different opinion about something. You know, right. it's, the millions of us are not going to all watch The Dark Knight Rises and think exactly the same thing about it. We're all going to feel differently about it. I mean, it is different, different if you get a, a reviewer who is obviously has a thing out for maybe, a, a, I don't know, I can't even think, a certain actor. Things right. Like that. If, Obviously, everything they review about a certain actor is always negative. Then what right. makes you think that their review in a, even a movie of this magnitude is going to be anything positive? You right. should go in there knowing a little bit more. Why would you just go to a random um, reviewer, basically? Right, right. You know what I mean? It, you, you basically have to go with kind of an open mind. If you've been following this reviewer in this, in this um, example I gave you, and mm -hmm. they think, I don't know, Who's in this movie? I can't remember. What's the main actor? Uh, like Christian Bale. If you think Christian Bale is a horrible actor, right? What makes you think that this reviewer is going to give anything towards Christian Bale's performance in a right. movie? I mean, you should know what you're getting into, basically. Right. Right. You just you, you just can't put. I mean, I don't understand why one person's review has to you know one negative review would would ruin your whole uh, outlook you know towards a movie or anything. And especially if it's going to be reason for you not to go see a movie, then you're right. sorry. Then you're the fool in that right. circumstance. Why you're letting somebody else's opinion? If in the beginning you saw the trailer, you saw the promos, whatever, and it made you interested in see the movie, you should see the movie. It shouldn't be anyone else should not. No one else should influence basically. Right. right. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's it's it, someone else's review should not affect your opinion of it. You know, if you enjoyed the movie, then you enjoyed the movie. Did you enjoy it less now because someone else didn't like it? That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I you mean, know? this is kind of going against what I said about you can't change their opinion. But, I mean, if you want to read a review that's not particular, particularly positive, mm -hmm. then as long as you're willing to give that person constructive um responsive criticism as right. to why you think it's good, right. then that's different. That's th those are positive type of back and forth. Right. Which is right. a good thing, which is a whole part of interacting and, you know, all that right. happens. So as long as you go in there with that kind of um, attitude as well, then that's good. You right. know, if you think something's totally negative, we're saying it's positive, well, tell us why you thought it was so negative and maybe – we would say, oh, okay, I can see why you would do that. It's not what I think, but I can right. see why you would think that. Right, exactly, exactly. At least have a point to what you're, you know, what you're bringing up. Yeah, so that was a good topic. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Um, the next thing I want to talk about was, uh, you had brought this up to me. Um, you had asked me about Ultimate Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, they just started the new Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, it's only on a issue 11 now. So I thought I might talk about it a little more. I didn't really tell you much about it, so I thought I might give you a little breakdown, and there might be others out there who 
um, haven't checked out Ultimate Spider-Man, um, and they might be interested in it and might, might want to know what it's about. Yeah, go ahead, because I really don't know much about it at all. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, let me just I'll start at the beginning. I think the Ultimate, uh, the Ultimate line was started by Marvel about 10 years ago. Uh, it was basically their way to have the same characters, or a lot of the same characters, but to start their origins like as if their origins started in the year 2000 versus a lot of them now, you know, whose their origins started in the Stan Lee days in the 50s and the 60s. Mm -hmm. So their origins are a lot more modern. <clears throat> and so Ultimate Spider-Man started is Peter Parker. Uh, it was written by Brian Michael Bendis. Um, and, it, and it has, again, some of the same characters. Um, some of the events that happen are different um, than the original Spider-Man, but a lot are the same. Um, it was a really good run. Um, I think it went for about a hundred. It went for about 160 issues, I want to say. Um, and then they did something that we never thought. I didn't think they were going to do is they actually killed Spider-Man. They actually killed Peter Parker. Okay. Um, he, you know, it's not really a spoiler because the issues set on the top of them, Death of Spider-Man, and it was like the, you know three or four issues. So you you knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but you know how in, in comics, you know, a hero dies and they just come back, you know, a couple months later. Yeah, that could happen always. Yeah. Right, exactly. So I was actually surprised when they actually killed him and they, they, they kept him dead. So he dies, okay. Now the new Ultimate Spider-Man picks up right after he's dead. Oh, um, that's this, good. So, yeah, it, it's, it transitions right, right into the next issue. And you start following this kid, uh, Miles Morales. Um, now he's a black kid... And he's in junior high, I believe. He's, he's very young. He's much younger than Peter Parker was. Because Peter Parker, I think, was in high school. Um, and he, gets, he has an incident where he gets bitten by a spider. It's kind of similar, but, but different than Peter's. Um, his powers are different um, than, than, than Peter Parker's. And he's not a science nerd at all. Okay. He's just a kid in school. Um, so where Peter Parker was able to invent his web shooters... Um, and then make a costume. Miles doesn't know how to do any of that stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so he doesn't have any webs. Okay. His powers are a little different. He can still cling to the walls and still jump and still has this strength. Um, but he also can turn invisible. He can just completely blend in with his background, which is kind of cool. Is um, there? My question for you, is there any spider like out there that can really like do that camouflage? I thought they, that was they do actually, and I forgot, but there is a spider that is able to camouflage itself with its background. Do they like make that I, sense in the storyline saying Yeah, they do, they do. Spider? Yeah, they do bring it up. He does talk about it. And I, I forget because I just can't remember which exact spider it was, but I do remember they talked about it in an issue. Okay. Well that's all that's all that matters, as long as yeah. they Make it like, oh, he doesn't just get different powers because right. of some reason, but he got bitten by a spider that has those traits. Right, right, exactly. It's a different spider um, than, than Peter Parker's was. Um, the other difference is he has, he has like a zap. Um, he, if, when he touches you, he can, uh, he can do, it's like a paralyzing zap that he does to you. So oh. he can take someone down with that. Um, which definitely make you know helps uh, make him a little more powerful since he is such a little kid like mm -hmm. you know um, but again as I said he doesn't he doesn't have any of the the smarts that Peter Parker does um, but he happens to run into Nick Fury and Nick Fury okay. who 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 was very remorseful about the whole Peter Parker thing because of Peter dying um, then he offers to train this kid and to give him the suit and to try to help him. And that's kind of where we're at, because like I said, we're only 11 issues in, so there's not a lot that they've covered. But to anyone who's interested in getting into it, again, there's not a lot of issues, so you, you can catch up pretty quickly. Um, I definitely really recommend it, because the, the characters that Brian Michael Bendis has written are very different from the, the Peter Parker line that we're going from. Um, the world that Miles is in is different now, because... When Spider-Man died, he was unmasked. So everyone knows that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. And so now, like J. Jonah Jameson, like people who knew Peter Parker all feel really differently about him. Um, and they hold him up as, a, as an icon, as a hero, like a Captain America type. Um, because they know that he saved their city, you know, numerous times, saved people's lives. So now that Miles is, is swinging around and then, 
a different Spider-Man costume, but still kind of Spider-Man, it, it gets different reactions from some people. Some people are very negative towards it. They say he shouldn't be doing that. Um, so I think it's, it's something that we've never seen, I, I, I can't think of, that I've seen when you've taken a popular icon and putting someone else in his place with the local people remembering that icon and knowing who he is. That's pretty cool. I like that. It sound, it's sounding really good so far. I mean, <clears throat> I like the, the new way they're taking it. No more Peter Parker. That's kind of good. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a good direction to take. Right. And it's not like they're saying it's his son or something right. done before in, you know, all these superhero universes, whatever the heck you want to call it. Right. So I, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, the fact that they made him black, it's it's also different, you know what I mean? Right. And say that he's he a nerdy has, guy, different issues. You know? Yeah, right. exactly. So that that's that's pretty cool. He has he because he has because of him being black, he has different issues, and he also um, has different feelings towards situations than Peter Parker would. And yeah. like I said, he doesn't have the smarts. You know, he's kind of more figuring things out on the fly. Um, no, they have not introduced any webs for this guy yet. No, he still no. does not have webs even into issue eleven. So. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, so you can imagine it makes it a lot. It's a lot dif- more difficult for him to get around. Exactly. I mean, even climbing walls. Still, I mean, it, that's still going to make it a lot, a lot different. Right. Spider-Man's right. biggest thing was his webs. Really, I mean, that's because- right. That's how he saved people. That's how he exactly. you know, did things. So it, yeah, it definitely makes it a lot harder for him. Um, and he also has, I don't want to say too much, but he has he has other influences that Peter Parker didn't have. You know, affecting him. So it's definitely. I think. You, I think you definitely should check it out. Uh, I'm sure it's in trade by now, uh, but it's only a couple issues in, so it's. it's well, no, I might to have to up. just uh, visit you and just read your comments. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all bagged and boarded. You can't open them. <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to save myself the trouble. No, that's okay. Yeah. It, it, seems, it, it seems pretty cool. Thanks for sharing that. I, that's. It's pretty interesting. Sure. Sure. <laughs> all right. Um. Another topic I wanted to talk about, I'm kind of borrowing this from uh, the Knights of the Clown Table podcast because they talked about it, and I thought we should talk about it too okay. uh, because it is something that I have thought about. Uh, it was th- the whole um, Twitter versus Facebook social networking thing, um, what your opinions were on the differences of them. Um, so I'll, I, I know how I feel. I'll let you go first like, as far as how do you feel about them. Well, you know, there's there's a lot of time. Well, <clears throat> let's talk about Facebook first. Facebook okay. is basically a place right now that it's so big. There's so many people on it, and the only reason you want to go on it is because the people there, not because Facebook itself is that great, because it really isn't, mm-hmm. in my opinion. It's it's not that great. I mean, I think that they steal from Facebook steals from a lot of other companies. They mm-hmm. steal from MySpace, in my opinion. They've been stealing from Google Plus, and I think Google Plus is actually the best one, out yeah. of, in all honesty. Yeah. But I think Twitter is a, it's a close second. I like that Twitter is kind of simplified. And, if, and um, I mean, I don't go online to Twitter too much, you know, mm. on my actual computer. Right, yeah, me either. Not, not too much. I mean, Twitter is great for on the fly, and that's what it mm. was always essentially made for. Now they're changing it a little bit to try to incorporate a little bit more into it. But um, ultimately, Facebook, there could be days that I don't go and I don't check in. The only time I really want to check in is because I know that my fa- a lot of my family is on there and a mm-hmm. lot of my friends are on there or acquaintances or high school people. And it's not that you know I don't want to consider them friends or whatever, but it's a nice way to have your detachment from them but still be kind of involved in what they do that might interest you. You know what right. I mean? Well, right. It's nice to have that, and unfortunately, not all of them, definitely not all of them, have migrated over to the other social networks because they're comfortable with Facebook. They're comfortable with all the problems Facebook does <laughs> offer, unfortunately. You know? Yeah. And, you know, the, I can't say that Facebook develops drama because drama is no matter where you are. You right. Know, social right. network, if you're a dramatic person, you're bringing drama to the social network. So right. you can't blame Facebook really for being dramatic and all this stupid crap. Right. But again, Facebook gets me pissed off is the fact that <laughs> they take so much from other companies 
and it, it it's mind blowing to mm-hmm. me. Like the whole thing with uh, the only example I can really give you right now is um, Facebook has I guess lists that you right. can keep your friends into. But that basically was an afterthought. It's never was right. something that was originally in there. And I don't even know how many people use it. To me, it's it's confusing as f- hell to, to set up. And I, I never, ever use it because it's an afterthought. Now I have how many people on my Facebook list, and now – more recently is when they wanted to push this. Why? Because Google Plus came out and they are integrated with their circles. Right. So you can, right. From, the, from the get-go, put people into circles so that if you want to share something like me, I have a gay community on there. So if I want to share something that you know straight people don't give a crap about, right. I can just share it with my gay community. You know right. I mean? Right. So, exactly. And that's it. It's just easy. It's easier to start a network that's based on circles and based on things like that. Now, Twitter has its own version of that, but not a lot of people use that either. Yeah. I, mean, no. I definitely tried to use it in the beginning, but I see that it really has gone nowhere, so there's no real point. Mm-hmm. So, Twitter, I can get on. Um, I, I like to check it out every once in a while. What I really love from Twitter is their trending topics. That I will say. Right. Compared to Facebook, Facebook, I'm just worried about what friends are posting and, you know, where they're going, all that happy jazz. Facebook, I'm sorry, Twitter, I'm looking for what's happening that's, that's interesting, that's, uh, that's, that's trending. Right. I love that. I love some really interesting, quirky trending topics. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's actually what's the, one of the first things I look for. Afterwards, then I'll go take the time and look through my the history to see if there's uh, anything interesting on there. I do follow a lot of gaming stuff. That's what mm-hmm. I'm into, so that's definitely what I search for on there. And then based on that, um, I, I'll probably reach out to maybe some gay stuff and then also other people who have interest in gaming. So right. that's where, where Twitter took off for me a little bit more once I started to find people that were interested in what I'm interested in. So. I think, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think for me, um, what I like about Twitter is that it's, it's very short, it's concise, it's only 140 characters, so you really can't be as, you know, long. It's just I mean, short it's into the yeah. fact. You have those extendos. Right, right, yeah, and I don't use any of those because I never feel the need to like talk that long. <laughs> but, but again, I mean, to, more power to whoever does. But yeah, from a, from an app standpoint, I mean, the Facebook app is just terrible. Mm-hmm. It's just it's always buggy. It's always broken. It's always you have to constantly refresh it. There's always issues with it. Um, the Google, I mean, the Google Plus app is is smooth. You know, you go in and it's just, it's everything smooth and, and it works perfect. Um, it's a great user interface. Um, the same thing with, and then the great thing about Twitter is that there's, there's like a billion, well, maybe not a billion, but there's a lot of Twitter apps out there that are kind of personalized depending on the, the type of user you are. That's true. So you get a better, you get more usage out of it because your, your app is tailored around it. There's not just one app. Well, you know, for saying that, what app do you use? Because I use the official Twitter app. I used to use uh, TweetDeck, I think, but mm-hmm. I, I like the official Twitter for myself, and I use Google, a uh, Google phone. So. Okay. Yeah. See, I use the uh, I use TweetBot, and uh, for me, as a power user, it's it's it's. I think it's the best. Um, you can you know manage several accounts. Um, what I what I have is, as you mentioned before, about putting people into lists. Um, I have a lot of my followers in the list as far as what sports uh, sports teams they like. Okay. So if I'm watching like a Yankees game, I can click on at the top of Tweetbot has the, the timeline. You can click on it and pick just that list. So the only tweets I would see would be tweets from people who are on my list of you know Yankees fans or Cowboys fans or whatever at the time I'm watching. So it's kind of nice because then it eliminates all the stuff that people are talking about otherwise that I wouldn't really care about if all I want to talk about is a Yankees game. Yeah, well, that definitely works for you. I know that sometimes when you are, uh, well, when a game's on, <laughs> you know when a game's on because... <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's fine. That's, that's what it is. It's supposed to be whatever you want to make it. I mean, right. somebody's getting text alerts. I used to do that with Twitter, but I learned very quickly that that's not a good approach at all. Like, unless you no. have no internet access then maybe you want to follow a couple people like that, getting their text alerts when they update Twitter. But especially someone like you, I would never. Yeah, 
<laughs> that's, that's a bad idea to get text alerts from me because, yeah, no, that's gonna that's gonna blow everything up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially if you're in one of those archaic phone uh, plans that you have to get paid for every second. Yeah, you not you don't have unlimited. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's um, it's definitely yeah you definitely don't want that. No, I do like that the 140 characters. Um, it's just really easy. I mean, the way that they have like pictures and everything, you have to actually go into it to see that. Mm -hmm. Basically, just seeing text is your first form of viewing for for Twitter, which makes it right. simple. I mean, of course, you can put links in there, you can put photos, whatever the hell else you want to really put, but you have to go an extra step if you want to go there. It's not really uh, taking up your timeline with all this extra stuff. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, and my and my other thing with with it just seems like uh, for for me, it's funny with Facebook, and I'm sure you've you've dealt with this too. It, there's very much this whole like like I'm trying to think of what the word is for it, but you know how you add someone you know that may be a family member or a friend of the family, and you know you don't really care for them that much, but you add them because all your family members have them, and you don't want them to go to your family members and be like, oh, this person didn't add me as a friend, you know, and then you get their, po you see their posts, and you're just like, oh, this person is an idiot, like, you know, oh, I gotta see this stuff in my timeline, so then, you know, you, you can, now you have the feature on Facebook to just, you know, unsubscribe that you wouldn't see their stuff. They're still a friend, and they don't know that you're unsubscribed or whatever uh, from them, but you still have them listed. But the fact that you even have to do that, you yeah. know. <laughs> it kind of defeats the point. It's like, okay, <laughs> right. so Facebook is getting all these users just because they want to say that I have how many people, you know, on my Facebook. I'm following so many people on Facebook, but how many people are you really following? All that happy jazz. Right, right. It, yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose. Like, I, I mean, I have a friend from high school that was telling me that he's, he has, you know, a ton of friends or whatever on his on his Facebook. But what he does is he he blocks everybody. The only ones he doesn't block are his subscriptions to like, you know, sports teams or like his interests or his websites. So the only thing he sees on his timeline on Facebook is that stuff. He doesn't see anybody's status posts. Wow. And to me, I'm like, well, then what's what's even the point? Like, right. so many better social networks for that. Google Plus is one of them. Google Plus, I mean, right. integrates searching so much more. I mean, you can just you can search not only for profiles, you can search for topics. I mean, that's but that's that's what I'm saying. That's the whole politics of it, though, because now he can't go back. He can't go out and just delete those people. Because if he deletes them, then, you know, they're going to tell his brother or his cousin or whatever, oh, this person doesn't like me anymore, you know, they deleted me from Facebook, what's the deal, is there an issue? You, you know what I mean? It's the whole, the whole politics of Facebook. Like, once you add someone that's a friend of the family, you can't, you can delete them, but then, you know, then they have to deal with that. And it's just, like, really, it's just the point where, that's what I like about Twitter. Like, I can just, I just unsubscribe or I just delete someone, unfollow them, and I don't care, you know? They're not going to call my mom or call my brother and say, you know, oh, this person unfriended me, you know? Yeah. You know, it's... I use, I use also Twitter to be more more verbal, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, not even my, my Google+, Plus. like, I can be verbal, but they're, Facebook definitely not, because, you know, I have too many people there. I have people there, uh, friends, family, people from my parents' church, where they're nice people. It's just, I feel bad personally, be right. so maybe vulgar, because I can be right. vulgar, but I don't care. That's me. I don't care. If you don't like it, screw off. But right. when it comes to family, friend, not friends, but family and, you know, people like from church and stuff, you just, you want to be kind of respectful. So right. to me, Facebook has turned into more of that. I mean, I would rather be more respectful of others there, whereas in my other social networks, if you're following me and you don't like what I have to say, then you can Seriously, like you said, unsubscribe. Right. Circle me. Whatever it is, what it is. But it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's the thing you can do that on the other ones, but yeah, on on Facebook, I'm very I'm very muted. You know, I can't I can't really post some things I think that are funny because I just know it's gonna you know it's gonna yeah, come back been, you know it's gonna yeah, you know it's it's you know my family or or my wife's family or you know 
Um, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to put people on the spot that's, like that. That's the bad part about having all these people in one area. Right. You get too many different groups of people. Some per people, this might be funny. Some people, that might be funny. But when you have them all together and you're sharing to everybody, it kind of sucks. Now, right. they, I, I can guarantee you people say, well, that's what lists are for. But right. because the list is so convoluted just to get it to freaking work, who the hell wants to work? Yeah, I'm not, going, I'm not going back and doing all that. Especially because how many people do you have on there now? You know what I mean? It's different I, when, yeah. when you set it up in the beginning. Yeah, I have more than that, and, and I'm like, you know what, no, I'm not going through my whole list to see where this person fits in, that person fits in, because being it that, that it was done too late because they copied other, you know, other people. Right, right, exactly. Too much work now, and I'm not going to put work into being on Facebook, F that. Right. No, it's not. It's, yeah, it's not as easy as Google Plus where you can just drag the person into the circle. You know, you can do multiple people really fast. Exactly, and when you add them, it's so easy to be like, okay, this person I'm putting into this circle. I'm creating this circle just for this person that I'm adding. It's just so much easier. It's, right. Yeah, it's, I mean, I only have like 200 people on Facebook, but I'm still not, I'm not bothering with it. It's just not worth it. I just think of think of how long 200 people it'll still take just to. Right. It's still not worth it. It's not worth right. it. Right. I have better things I'd rather do, like you know, talk on a video cast. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also Facebook. I mean. They do some stuff for everybody, but I think Facebook is more. If you want to be a stalker, you, you usually go to Facebook anyway. Yeah. You know, people, I mean, it's, it's on that as soon as you type something on your streamline, anybody can go and see, like, like let's say I commented on your page. It'll say what I commented and like, that I commented on your page. Are you freaking serious? Yeah, that's yeah it just, is a ridiculous. That's, yeah, that's just promoting stuff like drama. That right. really, because... Then you can be like, oh, well, I thought he wasn't talking to this person. And right. Like, oh, is he commenting this? What is he commenting about? And then it's just, it's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. I mean, Twitter has that too, kind of. I mean, you have to at somebody in order to talk to them. But you can also private message people too. And I don't know. I mean. But yeah, but you don't get alerts when like they talk to someone or they or they like someone something or whatever. You well, know what it's I mean? It's all part of a stream as opposed yeah. to to Facebook, let's say if I don't post anything personally on my timeline for everybody, but I'm posting on other people's walls on Facebook, then when you go to my timeline, all you're seeing is everything I'm posting on everybody else's wall. Right. Right yeah. for your, your viewing pleasure. It's just, <laughs> it, it kind of, that, that part is, dumb. I mean, I guess it has its benefits sometimes, but for the most part, you know, it's just and, you, and, you can, and you can change it, and that's the thing. You can change it and make it so you don't see that stuff, but the default is that you see that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, again, who is going to go into it and say, okay, I want to see everything from this person, but not everything from this person? You know, that's just a lot of work. You know, why would you want to bother? It is a lot of work. <laughs> so It's too much work. Facebook is already too It's supposed to be fun, right? Yeah, I mean, like I said, there are some times that I actually do enjoy. It really depends on what people are posting, to be quite honest. Right. Other than that, there's that's why I don't I don't worry about Facebook too much. Ooh, are you still there? Well, I guess you went away. And I guess I'm gonna end this podcast now because my uh, buddy Danny just left me hanging here. So. Uh, that's what we're going to end on anyway, so thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. <laughs> Bye.